the monster. Who is going to tell us why should we use this technology in mental health? So I'll be most Thank you. About three, three and a half years ago, um, as a teenager would, experimenting with, with uh, drugs, um, kind of those kind of things that you're not supposed to do, um, I, I found myself in, in a different world. I, I suffered psychosis. And there was a very severe episode of psychosis. Um, um, in terms of coming out of my illness, what I found that I went into was, was a depression state. So I kind of lost myself as well. I lost my personality, I lost who I was. So going through that journey, it was just kind of the beginning. Part of the application is it's like an organizer and whatnot to, to help me. That could have helped me on my day-to-day -day life. So whether it's, you know, when to take my tablets, when I should be going out for a walk, when I could try new things, maybe get out of the house. I was very secluded. So um, that this application could have managed my expectations a little bit better, better if I had this tool. Right about that time, that's when I came up with the idea for Tri Life, and I thought, um, if you read them old adventure books where you could like choose your own adventure, like to get, like turn to page 12 to go to the castle, or turn to page 20 to go there, I thought, wouldn't it be good if we could do something like that, like or, like issue based for young people? At the end of each storyline, there's a database of services that needs to be populated. So, like, if a young person, uh, they can go through and play as many times as they want. Um, if they want advice at the end, they can then be directed straight to the people who are, are there to offer that advice. In episode one, there are 20 plus possible endings, with some random occurrences thrown in. Episode two will have more than 30 possible routes, and will further expand upon the choice-based format. Well, I think after the last couple of presentations, this is welcome to the granny spot. <laughs> um, I can honestly say there are not many women over 50 in technology, welcome to one. Um, so I set up Big White Wall in uh, 2007, and what I'd like to take the opportunity to do in this, in this sort of space, I don't think I know about what best practice is, I think it's all too new, but what I can talk a little bit about is some of my reflections on good practice. What is the role of the clinician in an online environment? And I personally think it offers a lot of opportunities for professionals to work and engage in very, very different ways with people. I think it's quite liberating, but I also think it's quite scary. The key areas for me are around privacy and confidentiality, people's safety, the evidence that it actually all works, that we provide professionals with the opportunity to reimagine their own roles and their own selves online, but fundamentally at the centre of it all is people and their own lived experiences and their own journeys to better mental health. Thank you. Yes, so what I've taken away from the conference so far is it's quite interesting to see how people, other people are using technology uh, and to, to really get involved in the sort of online sphere. It's quite, it's quite interesting to see some uh, end users as well and how they would um, uh, utilise the technology in a more sort of setting. I think it's really exciting to think about embracing the technology and not be fearful. I think that's something we're really struggling with in the NHS and I think that's something that's come across this morning is really get out there, use it because that's what particularly younger people are doing and of course the younger people are going to end up being the bulk of the people we see over the next few years. There's lots of messages I've taken away. I think the main ones are around the huge range of um, resources and different ways of working and the really creative ways that people are applying things and and just the energy as well you can hear the energy in the room people are really excited and they're really thinking differently well there you go introduce it um you see our strap line there is therapy services in the digital world so they can respond in their own way about a self-weighted score of how they feel from good to okay to to, to bad and begin to say something about what they feel that's exactly what Buddy does every evening. You ask one simple question about how they feel, ask them to wake their day. It takes that information and it uploads that into the web application. And so they're moved on as creative as they move on. It's just really nice to see like, all the different ideas that are coming through from um, f from different projects and, and their approach based on maybe the, their experience or, or, or their take on mental health and healthcare. It's been really, really great to hear from all of these fantastic projects. 
big, big supporters, long-time supporters of Big White Wall and Buddy. Um, but Tri Life has been a new thing that I've been introduced to during this conference, which I think is fantastic. And hearing the journeys of the developers has been wonderful for me personally, because it can be quite isolating to be working in this kind of disruptive way in health and digital. And so to be brought together as a community of people who are all working towards the same goals, but maybe in different, slightly different ways, is, is really wonderful. It's really motivating. It's a really useful conference in challenging perceptions and looking at a way forward that's going to be uh, created for both service users and ourselves. It's really empowering, really positive, and uh, it's just nice to be around people that understand that technology needs to be used more to improve services. Lovely.